In today's presentation, we're going to take a brief look at the different components that make up cells. First of all, cells are the basic units of structure and function in all living things. And so basically the organi organization goes cells, which build together to create tissue, tissues which build together to create organs, organs which build together to create organ systems, and then organ systems that are combined together to make a, an organism or a body. There have been several different people who have been credited with discovering different things about cells. One such person is Robert Hooke. He was an English scientist and he observed cork cells in 1663. Now you don't necessarily need to write this down, but I do want you to have some sort of understanding of some of the basics of discovering cells. Another person who's listed in your textbook is Anton van Leeuwenhoek. He was a Dutch businessman and he was credited with being the first person to see single-celled bacteria. You do need to make sure that this is written down and this is cell theory. Um, cell theory has different components depending on which textbook you're looking at. Our textbook only includes these three components of cell theory. That all living things are composed of cells, that cells are the basic unit of structure and function in living things, and that all cells are produced from other cells. So cell organelles, and organelle means that it's a tiny structure that carries out a specific function. And here's just a list of some of the organelles found in plant cells and some of the organelles found in animal cells. You don't have to write them all down right now because we're going to talk about them individually. I just wanted you to get an idea of some of the things that were there. Then here's a picture of a plant cell and a picture of an animal cell. And you should be able to tell that the plant cell is on the left and the animal cell is on the right. So take a moment to kind of look at the things that are similar between the two cells and some of the things that are different. Again, you don't have to write anything down here. Now a cell wall is a rigid layer of non-living material and it surrounds a plant cell and cells of some other organisms, but typically it's found in plant cells. Um, it helps to support and protect the cell and it's made of cellulose. And then there's a little diagram of what it kind of looks like. Now remember, cell walls are in plant cells, not most animal cells. Animal cells do, however, have a cell membrane. This cell membrane helps to protect the cell. It's selectively permeable. That means it controls the things that go inside and outside of the cell through its pores. And there are three methods by which things move in and out through the cell membrane. These three methods include diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. So diffusion is where molecules move from an area of a very high concentration to an area of very low concentration. Over time, molecules bump back and forth into each other and they spread out. They like to be further away from each other. Osmosis is just a special kind of diffusion where water is specifically moving through a selectively permeable membrane. So dif diffusion and osmosis are passive transport. Molecules are just moving back and forth um, at their own pace and eventually they spread out. So passive transport would be osmosis and diffusion. Active transport, however, is the movement of materials that require the use of energy. So there are a couple different examples of this, and one is the transport proteins. Transport proteins carry calcium, potassium, and sodium into and out of the cells. And hopefully you're very familiar with the terms calcium, potassium, and sodium. And we'll come back and talk about how, how chemistry is involved in cells. The other way, form of active transport, is transport by engulfing. This is when a particle is engulfed and then it's placed in a vacuole. We'll talk about that a little more in class. So one of the important components of a cell is the nucleus, and it acts as the control center for the cell. It has a nuclear membrane that protects it, and there is chromatin inside of it. That's the genetic material that tells the cell what it's supposed to be doing. Then there's also a nucleolus, which produces ribosomes. Then we have some organelles that are found in the cytoplasm. So first of all, cytoplasm is the area between the cell membrane and the nucleus. And it's sort of a jelly-like material. So one of these organelles that's in the cytoplasm is the mitochondria. The mitochondria produce most of the energy needed by the cell. You may have also heard it called the powerhouse. We also have the endoplasmic reticulum which is the ER. These are passageways that carry proteins from one part of the cell to another. We can either have smooth ER or rough ER. 
ribosomes are attached to rough ER, making it look rougher, okay, and they produce protein. That's the job of the ribosomes. Golgi bodies receive proteins and materials from the ER. Remember that ER is endoplasmic reticulum, and they send them to other parts of the cell. We also have chloroplasts. They capture energy from the sun, and they use it to produce food. But remember, chloroplasts are only found in plant cells, not animal cells. We also have vacuoles, which are storage areas for food or waste, things the cell is trying to save for later. Lysosomes are also another type of organelle, and they contain digestive enzymes, and they break down food and old cellular components. Take a minute to look at the picture. See if you can find some of the things that we just talked about and that you wrote down, uh, See and try to become more familiar with what they look like. There are also some specialized cells. Not all cells in the body look like the, the pictures of the cells that I showed you. We're going to talk about specialized cells later. Um, but for the most part, what you need to know now is the primary organelles that we talked about. Some other special cells, though, are bacteria. For instance, bacteria has a cell wall and a cell membrane, but it doesn't have a nucleus. So its genetic material, its chromatins and chromosomes, is just kind of found in the cytoplasm floating around. And then, as I said before, many-celled organisms, like you, because you have lots of cells, have lots of specialized cells. And we'll talk about those as we talk about the different organ systems. So make sure you write everything down. If you have questions, write those down too, and we'll talk about them in class.